You're watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome back. Joining us now is House Minority Leader Tony McCombie to talk about the end of session and that budget that was passed this past week. Leader, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I guess let's get started with the obvious questions here. The morning, the late night, early morning to get the budget passed. Uh, we saw all through the night those debates stretch. What did you think about the, the budget itself, knowing that you had at least a few days there to digest some of the details and uh, the revenue bill and all that came with it? Yeah, well, there's, there's, there's a lot to unpack just with that little short thing right there. But uh, I, I, as much as I hate that the House has lost control of the budget, I love that the Senate has taken over because we do have several days to review it. So that's, that is a good thing for the House. So uh, I don't mind that we don't have the soundbite anymore, that we've had an hour to review the budget. Uh, but we still have the sound bite that uh, in the wee hours of the night, the budget was uh, uh, called. So, uh, but the bottom line is, is that it is again, another bloated budget. And that's unfortunate for the taxpayers. $53.1 billion of spending uh, continues to be uh, an increase. Uh, there is roughly uh, 700, I think, $746 million of the, the tax bill, completely unnecessary, a hit on uh, mostly businesses, um, but also uh, uh, personal uh, income as well. Uh, and it, it's unnecessary. We could have cut spending. We could, we could say no to political uh, projects. That amounted in uh, $625 million. So it would have been a very easy budget, but unfortunately, uh, to get votes um, on the Democrat side when you have that big of a bloated budget, you got to buy your votes. So that costs six hundred and twenty five million in political pork. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to cost the taxpayers of seven hundred and forty six million dollars in tax increases. When we saw the or we heard all session for really the past year that this was going to be a tight budget year. That was often the phrase that was used. Uh, revenues were not expected to come in as high as previous years, but we still saw that I think it was a 1.6% increase over last year's budget. And I just, I, when you see that, that total number, that overarching 53.1 billion number, were you surprised by that considering all that we've heard for the past few months or was this more of an expectation? No, it really is a, a tight budget. I, and I, I wish they, they crafted the budget the way that it truly is. I mean, we're already going to be um, setting ourselves up for failure. They are setting uh, Illinoisans up for favor, uh, uh, failure next year. Uh, we're looking at already a, a billion dollar hole uh, FY26. So uh, here we are, they're going to say the same thing next year, and it's going to be true. Um, they don't need to craft this budget in that way. And that's unfortunate, but they do it. And, uh, and until we bring balance to the house, I mean, it's our job as the minority to hold them accountable. I I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that media allows us to have a voice so we can say that. Uh, and luckily, we do have a document, an actual document that is filed um, that you can actually look at it. So we can back that up with a, a, a 3,328 piece of paper that shows um, that we're not telling uh, lies. We're, we are actually telling the truth and we're gonna hold the other side accountable. So uh, with the revenue bill, especially, that's this is those tax increases that you were talking about, mostly on businesses, but uh, obviously was a big uh, sticking point for a lot of these negotiations. This was often what we were hearing was the problem, why the, why, both the House and Senate went by that Friday deadline from last week. Uh, sports wagering companies obviously not happy with, with the outcomes of this, but we also saw retailers needing to get some deals cut to, in order to get them on board with it. What, when people are at home watching this and hearing about you know, tax hikes for the budget, what do you think are the takeaways that, that you're going to be trying to put towards them and you know, communicating that this is for business, this is largely for businesses, but the uh you know communicating that to the regular person yeah when you're talking about sports sports wagering you know i have a i have a, a a troll right now on my facebook page you know feeling sorry for sports wagering it's not about that it's not about changing how they're they're taxing them per se but 
we have a license that could be used right now. So let's open it up. I mean, so so there's things that are happening right now on that side. So there's there's issues with gambling already. Um, so rather than change it in the middle uh, of, of a process, let's just fix what's going on right now. So that's that's really the issue there, but that's a little bit inside baseball. Really, the 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 issue, one of the issues, and I talked about it on the on the floor, is the the cap of the retailers' uh, discount, and that's that's going to be um, Illinoisans will notice that when they go to um, their local cafe uh, or they go to their grocery store with their link card. Um, or they're visiting from out of the country and they go to Chicago and they're not allowed uh, to use their card uh, because of the new process that's coming forward um, that's never been done. And they're going to say, well, I'm sorry, you can't use your, your debit card or your visa card um, or your link card because of something that was done in Springfield. So when people start realizing that, that's going to be an issue. Just to be clear, you're talking about the changes to the interchange fee for that with the credit card fees that get tacked on. I, I, I'll ask you a follow up on that because the, the deal that was cut here to get retailers on board with this budget is essentially they're getting less money from the state for collecting sales tax, but they will have to give less money to credit unions to uh, payment processors in return because the fees, those tiny little credit card fees that get tacked onto your bill will now be applied before sales tax and gratuity would be calculated into the whole thing. So those fees would be applied prior to, to, to a smaller amount of money, I guess. Now, credit unions, like you had just said, have been arguing this could result in multiple payments. They're not sure exactly how this is going to play out. And I'm curious about that, because this seems like, on its surface, a pretty savvy decision, a pretty savvy deal that was cut to get retailers to back off of a stance they've held for decades. But to make this to kind of hinge the revenue of this next year, the, the, at least the balancing revenue of this next year on a system, an untested system. What do you think about that as the, as the result of these negotiations? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, that's where I'm saying where the, the inside baseball piece is the deal, right? So, um, and it's a zero revenue, it's gonna be the process. So when somebody can't utilize, you know, it's sliding it a fee from, uh, the retailer to the bank is, is going to be an issue. And, and so that that's inside baseball between those two organizations, right? But the, the hurt will be when I or you or a family can't use or a visitor can't use their, their cards. That's going to be the issue. Um, I don't, I don't think, to be quite honest, I don't think they're going to be able to put this in place. So maybe they won't feel that hurt. But another thing that they're going to, that's going to be interesting too, is um, the, the, the grocery tax. And I'm sure this will be another area where, um, you know, the, we all want the grocery tax to go away. I want complete tax reform. I think this is a real way and, you know, living right here, um, Iowa has done a really great job and continues to do a great job um, to, and I noticed you I'm pointing that way because there's right there, uh, is uh, a great way of tax reform and they're growing their state. Um, and because of that tax reform, you know, they might not be on um, a, a different scale when it comes to overall tax payments because maybe they, they put it onto service or different cases. But grocery tax, for example, we're getting rid of the grocery tax. Great. However, um, the locals are going to see a possibility of a one to two percent increase on their taxes. So they're going to see that and they're going to say, hold on, wait a minute. I thought we got rid of the grocery tax. And then they're going to say, well, you know, as being a mayor before, wait a minute, why did my taxes, my local taxes go up? And then the local mayor and the municipalities are going to say, well, the, the governor in Springfield took away the taxes, so um, we had to put these in place. So call your state representative, call your senator, call your governor. The policies they did in Springfield forced us to do this to you. So when we start seeing here locally the impact, we're going to start blaming Springfield. And it's true. So when we start seeing that, here locally, when people start seeing the impact here locally, that's going to be the issue. I want to shift now because we're done with the spring 
legislative session. Now we're heading into the summer, into the fall, uh, leading into that general election year. And I wonder when you are leaving the, a session like this, going into going to the campaign trail, what do you take away from this session and, and what really becomes the, the centerpieces as you're trying to gain ground back in the state of Illinois and maybe uh, chip away at a, at a super minority or a super majority? Yeah, I, I got to be honest with you. I, I walked out of the Capitol. Uh, I looked at Leader Hammond and I said, you know, as bad as that just was, I, I, I will be completely honest with you. I said, I don't feel beat up because that just gave me hope. Um, I will tell you, uh, the speaker is no political strategist, that's for sure. And you saw that when the the budget breakdown, the tax revenue was, you know, took them three times. It took them to break their own rules to get a, 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 a that bill passed. Um, th they don't have it together. Uh, it gives me hope when I see um, targets not voting, when I know that that they're worried about those seats. Uh, we have really great candidates. They're working really hard, raising money. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited that we're going to make some change. We're going to bring some more balance. You know, are we going to are we going to turn it and become the, ma the majority party? Absolutely not. We're going to have incremental change. We've got a, a, a strategy over the next 10 years. And if there's anything else that anybody can say, there's one thing that I've done. Um, I flipped a seat. I have worked hard. Um, and we're going to do that on a state level. How do you go about keeping the attention, I guess, more on the local issues in an election like this? When we're talking about district house districts in Illinois, we've seen a lot of different elections over the years now become so uh, they gravitate more towards those the conversations around national issues. Obviously, it's a presidential year, so that's going to be in everybody's face for the next several months. I wonder, from your perspective, do you think it serves to steer into those issues more or to focus more on what's impacting those local districts and, and the way that those specific lawmakers can make change? Well, we talk about it all the time, uh, Republicans. Uh, we have 40 in the House. We represent parts of all 102 counties. We understand the state. We understand the local issues. Presidential elections don't hurt Republicans in Illinois. Uh, they they bring us out as well. Um, and I, I, I'm not worried about that. We all around the state, you know, when you're talking about uh, food deserts, when you're talking about transportation, um, you hear that a lot uh, from uh, Chicago legislators, uh, but we're living it. Uh, when we're when we're having to travel, you know, thirty miles to forty five miles uh, to a hospital or for health care, um, or uh, a Casey's general store is our grocery store. Um, when we, you know, when you're looking at the budget and you're finding um, funds out of one of the articles is is going to a a, a, a service that they're actually delivering fresh food, uh, fresh fruit to your home. We don't have that here. Uh, we don't have that capability. We don't have state funded uh, capital money going to uh, Jane Doe, who has started a uh, an organization that's going to deliver me fresh fruit. You know, talk about food deserts. Um, we understand the local issues. Uh, presidential elections don't hurt us. And uh, I'm, I'm looking very, very forward to this election cycle. All right. Well, House Republican leader Tony McCombie, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back.